let's say maybe you do something here which uh, improves, let's say, the software of the inverter. And could we just send it over software update to all of the customer cards? Yeah, we just push an update and uh, customers can literally uh, download the update to their car <laughs> and have no, more, more power overnight. Yeah. Hello everybody, welcome to another episode of Mondays with Mate. As you know, anybody can make a suggestion about what we are going to film next. And one of our employees, Marco Kitchin, commented very seriously on a Facebook post of mine that the next guy we should film is Matteo, one of our colleagues working on inverted development. So we took it very seriously. Here we are in our dyno room where we are testing different high voltage components including the inverter. The dyno room is a little bit of a mess because we have built it ourselves years ago. Instead of buying one for millions of euros, we had to figure things out like with just most of the things that we are doing. So we built one ourselves. We are now building a separate testing facility with proper dynos so it will look a little bit nicer. But one of the things that we are doing here mostly is testing the inverter. And here we are with Matteo Milovac who is one of the guys, one of the, I think, 20-ish people who is responsible for the development of our inverter. And you must be very happy with your friend Marco, who suggested that you super, uh, participate in this uh, episode. Yeah, that was such a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, Matteo, you can tell us a little bit, maybe first, how did you get to this company? I was uh, on a faculty of electrical engineering and computing in Zagreb and uh, on my fifth year of college uh, I was working in a formula student team, I was designing my own inverter and basically I somehow got to this company, I got to conversation with the people and uh, I started as an intern with, with a guy who is doing all the nasty stuff in the beginning and uh, now I grew up to the team lead of the inverter and better hardware engineering. Yeah, you're actually two years in the company, which is like you are a veteran already. Uh, yeah, yeah, something like that, yeah. <laughs> uh, one of the things I think you did was you were how long? Half a year in China, right? Uh, whole, one whole year in China. Yeah, and there we were building our joint venture company and this was quite an amazing experience and even more because I'm quite young, <laughs> I'm fresh from the college, so. And now what you're doing is stuff like this, right? So the electronics that are inside of this box, uh, like the hardware and the software of the inverter? Yes, basically my team and I, we're designing all the electronic boards like this, which are inside of the inverter and all the high voltage components. It's not only us uh, who are working on this inverter, but there is also a bunch of uh, embedded software engineers who are making software for boards like this. There is uh, motor control engineers who are making sure that uh, motor is spinning well, that you don't have problem with safety inside of the car. There are also mechanical engineers who are designing the outside the appearance of the inverter, the mechanical rigidness, the cooling stuff, and all the other people who are supporting us with the different simulations. So we are talking now about inverter. Maybe you can explain us what is an inverter. So inverter, which you can see here, is a device which is taking DC, direct current, from the battery of the car, uh, converts it to AC and uh, supplies it to the motor. So basically it takes the command from the driver. When you press the pedal, uh, it sends the message to accelerate and it does everything needed just to make torque on the motor so you can accelerate. I think in old way thinking, it's kind of like a carburetor. Something like this, yeah, yeah, but very uh, big and expensive one. <laughs> yeah. So between the inverter and the driver's foot, there's lots of other stuff happening. So for example, when the driver says, I want to accelerate with the throttle, it doesn't go straight to the inverter, because especially because we have four of them in the car. So it goes through an ECU, which has the torque vectoring algorithm and then sends the command towards the inverter, yes, right? Yes, yes, exactly like that. And it's doing it 100 times in a second. So once you press a pedal, it, uh, it takes 100 of a second to do all the torque vectoring and to give the command to the inverter. And how fast does this then have to calculate the torque or the current towards the motor? And this is calculating in like 20,000 times a second. <laughs> yeah, and you have been doing this software and your team from scratch? Uh, yes, yes. We, we designed everything from zero. We didn't have any base because we are a young company and we didn't have previous experience with inverters. 
So basically everything is built from scratch, from electronics and from software. And why is this inverter something special? Because it's double inverter in my housing. It's a one megawatt unit and it's responsible for driving the rear motors, so the whole rear axle. This inverter is maybe the one of the most power dense inverters on the market. So it's one megawatt on only 37 kilos. And we, in the new design, it's becoming even lighter than this. So one megawatt for the rear axle, which is basically like 200 households. Something like that, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so two inverters basically. So we have the cold plate in the middle to cool the components. And then we have one inverter basically on the bottom, one on the top. On the top. And each one is connected to its own motor and then all the control electronics in it. That's basically how it looks like. And then we have another one in the front, which is smaller because the front motors are less powerful because the front wheels have less grip. Uh, but that's, let's say, one of the most complex and most important uh, parts of a car. So now we are in the final phases of development of the C2. The cars are running already on the roads and on test tracks and so on, but you are still testing here. So what are you doing? This is uh, like a first prototype of the, of the inverter and we are connecting it to the, one of the previous versions of the motors for the C2. And uh, what we are doing, we are pushing this inverter to the highest voltage and highest current to see if everything works well. We are logging all of this data with our acquisition units and we are doing that everything in this room. <laughs> so basically, if uh, we want to have more performance later, so more power and more torque, more torque is basically more current from the inverter. Yeah. So basically, if you can squeeze out a little bit more amps out of the inverter. It's always first done here, and then we are safe to say, okay, it will work in a car. <laughs> well, let's say maybe you do something here, which uh, improves, let's say, the software of the, of the inverter, and you get to get more 10, 10 or 20% more current. And could we just send it over software update to all of the customer cards? Yeah, we just push an update and uh, customers can literally uh, download the update to their car. <laughs> and have more power overnight. And have more, more power overnight, yeah. A little bit better than a carburetor. Uh, yeah, much better. <laughs> Testing an inverter sounds quite cool because you're not just running a software somewhere, but you're actually pushing hundreds of kilowatts through these cables and through these motors here. So can you explain us how this works? Yes, yeah, so uh, the testing looks like this. Our inverter, as a unit under test, is supplying this motor. This is a prototype motor for C2, and this motor is connected to two motors from Concept1. The reason is because this motor is as powerful as these two old motors. This motor is working as a motor, uh, and we are drawing the energy from the network. Uh, while well, these two motors are working as a generator and pumping the energy back to the network. And the cool thing about this is that we are not taking too much power from the network, we are taking just the difference between them, the two of them. So maybe you have, I don't know, 300 kilowatts running here and because of the losses you get maybe 290 kilowatts on this generator and the grid needs just to cover the 10 kilowatts difference between the two. Yes, it's exactly like that, yeah. Okay. Can you tell us why we have this tape on the, on the motor? So while we were doing tests on the prototype motor, we actually needed to measure the temperature. So there are a bunch of uh, the temperature sensors inside of the motor and we needed to cover it with something not shiny so we can measure with a thermal camera. Okay. And these motors here, so as far as I remember the C1, the Concept1 axle, the two motors had actually 660 kilowatts. And this C2 motor, just one of them, has 500 kilowatts, right? Yes, but uh, this motor itself can create 700 newton meters of torque, which is the same as the two motors together, because each one can give 350. A lot for a small watermelon. Yeah, quite a lot. <laughs> this all sounds really cool, so I would like to see it in action. Can we have a test? Yeah, sure, let's go to the test. Okay. Okay, what are we going to do now? So I spin the machine and you just need to apply the full torque to it. Full torque, 700 Newton meters. Yes, uh, I just need to do the preparation. Okay. Wait. I need to make sure that two Concept1 motors survive this. Okay. If anything goes wrong, you have the red button, just kick it. Okay. <laughs> and uh, you can start ramping up. So now the generator motor spins. Yes, and now you're ready to do the load. So 700 Newton meters, here yes. we go.
Great. Didn't blow up. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's good. This was really cool to see how you are testing. Luckily, we didn't blow up an inverter, which can happen sometimes, and the magic smoke stayed inside of the inverter. So thank you very much for showing us everything, Matteo. Uh, of course, it was my pleasure. So this was it for today. I hope you learned something new. I hope you liked how we test our inverters. And if you have some questions, let us know. And let us know what you would like us to show next. I know that you might have a suggestion with your friend uh, Marco to give back to him, but let us know if you have something else that you would like us to show.